This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. More on them later. So in the last solar plane V4 video, I flew for like eight or nine hours, proved that it could sustain itself on solar power. Um, but flying in a circle isn't very practical and not very interesting. So today we're going to take off and fly a waypoint mission that I have pre-programmed and we're going to go out east about 50 miles and then turn south and then go back to the west another 50 miles. So it's like a hundred mile waypoint mission and we're going to let the plane fly its mission. It's going to be operating completely autonomously and we'll follow it, follow it in the car to make sure everything goes smoothly and, you know, take manual control if something were to go wrong. So, uh, yeah, long range solar FPV cross country flying. Let's do this. Here we go. Okay, how about that? So Banji has been kind enough to join me and uh, act as the vehicle operator so I can focus my full attention on the plane. I'm gonna flip it into uh, autonomous mode right now and the plane will climb to the altitude of the first waypoint. Okay, so Banji, the plane will now try and follow this road. Um, you can probably chill here. It's gonna fly back there to the first waypoint and then start to make its way down the road. We got our little FPV feed right here. Oh, that's wild. So far, so good. Let's see, we're at 15.6 uh, volts. So the voltage isn't super high. Okay, we can start to go down the road. All right, following the solar plane. So my setup here is not ideal. Um, I've got the Dragon Link antenna in the car, obviously, which uh, it should be mounted outside, and it's not. Right now we're flying over the Beverly Dunes, which is an off-roading area for dirt bikes and ATVs and stuff like that. Um, you might actually remember it from my autonomous soaring video because this is the same ridge line that I was soaring back and forth across. So on the mission planner here, you might notice a blue little pin. You'll, so you'll see where the, where the plane is. Obviously it's the red plane icon. And then there's that blue pin and that is us. I have a GPS plugged into the computer here and it's updating our position on mission planner, which is the software that I'm using to control the plane or monitor the plane in this case, since it's controlling itself. And that home position is actually updating the rally point number zero, which what that means is in case of a fail-safe event, like if I lose signal or something goes catastrophically wrong, and slow down a little bit, please. The plane won't try and return to home where we took off. It'll, retry, it'll try and return to us based on this GPS location, which is pretty awesome. That's sick. That's such a cool view, given it's pretty shaky. Banj, can you please drive a little smoother? <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Our altitude looks a little lower than I would think. Well, I guess we're about to hit the ninth waypoint, so the altitude might change then. Oh, mm. bumpy road. Uh, what's our target vehicular speed or automotive speed? And just matching the solar plane which is our target vehicular speed is 6.8 meters per second 6.8 <laughs> sorry that probably doesn't help you yeah so an american what would you say that that is Daniel? uh it's 15 to 12 i don't know 12 to 15 okay. it's the solar planes over there it's about to cross our path so you can speed up a little bit right now okay dude it looks like a bird it pretty much is just a foam bird this is going very well so far, surprisingly. Surprisingly and not surprisingly. I have been anxious about starting this mission for the last few days because there's just so much to think about when you're doing this sort of thing. But in reality, it's really simple. All we're doing is a waypoint mission and just following the plane. So we're at 15.5 volts, which uh, is not too much lower than when we started. It's 9.40 a.m., meaning the sun is gonna get higher in the sky for the next two or three hours. So we'll, we can only do better on solar power. Big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. My roommates and I live in a slightly sketchy area, and Banji decided we needed better home security, so he built this facial recognition Nerf ball launcher that autonomously shoots anyone who walks by. Intruder, 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 freeze. 
Put your hands where I can see them. Wait, stop, come back. Suspect is uncooperative. Target acquired. Engaging target. Turns out he's actually a better software engineer than mechanical engineer, so we decided to switch to SimpliSafe instead. SimpliSafe brings home security into the digital age with a network of wireless sensors around your home that all connect to the cloud. This enables you to monitor your home from anywhere you have an internet connection. SimpliSafe also offers a professional monitoring service and will alert the police if anything bad happens. There are a wide range of sensors including entry, motion, glass break, flood, carbon monoxide, smoke, video doorbell, HD camera, smart lock, key fob, control panel, and freeze. You also get the ever so aesthetic base station. Now all this tech sounds pretty hard to install, huh? Turns out it's actually as simple as connecting the base station to your Wi-Fi and following the simple step-by-step -step instructions to connect each one of the sensors. They even use adhesive pads to attach to the walls, so installation is quick and easy. Visit simplysafe.com slash rctestflight to get 30% off of your system, plus a free camera. That's a great deal, so don't wait until it's too late. Now back to the solar plane adventure. So there's this guy who also built a very successful solar plane, and he uh, sent me a message and said, hey, I think I know why your battery got overcharged in the last video. So yeah, big thanks to that guy. But basically what he said is the Genesun GV5, which is the MPPT charge controller that I'm using, it has uh, ground switching or low side switching. So basically it's not switching the positive side on and off, on and off, on and off to control the voltage. It's switching the negative side on and off, on and off, on and off to control the voltage. So what that means is the solar cells, the solar power system needs to be electrically isolated from the battery side and the whole, the whole plane, the whole flight controller, all the other electronics. So the solar cells have to be wired straight into the charge controller without any other connections. And during my last video, I did have another connection. That was the power meter. I had a power meter in between the solar cells and the flight controller to measure the, to ideally, it wasn't working, but ideally it would have measured the uh, amount of electricity flowing from the solar cells into the battery. And that was a ground that connected the solar cells directly to the rest of the power system. So it was going around the MPPT charge controller and charging, yeah, it was, it was basically just bypassing the MPPT and charging the battery directly from the solar cells. But here's the catch. This MPPT is limited at 75 watts. It's got a five amp max. That's why it's called the GV5. I think by bypassing the MPPT, we might have actually been charging the battery more efficiently than using the MPPT with that 75 watt limit. It sounds crazy, I know, right? But if you match the, the battery voltage to the solar voltage, um, you can actually do a pretty good job without an MPPT and you kind of don't even need one. So I've put the MPPT back in, it's set up correctly, so there's no going around with the floating ground system. It's all isolated properly now. But the downside to that is we're now restricted to 75 watts. So we'll see how it does. I'm not convinced it'll be able to fly all day on solar anymore. I should probably take the MPPT controller out. It would probably do better. <laughs> probably should have done that for this flight, but hey, we can always try again, right? Um, and another thing is last time the battery almost blew up. This time I installed a BMS. The BMS is only there for overcharge protection and cell balancing. The BMS is not used for over discharge protection. Um, hey, I paraglided here once. The reason you have to be careful about using a BMS on an airplane is because it has the capability of just completely cutting power and the plane will just crash. So I have it wired up as to where the plane is pulling power directly from the battery and that's not going through the BMS, but it is charging through the BMS. Is that just a terrible explanation of the whole low side switching thing? The on off, on off, on off. <laughs> I feel like there's a technical way to describe that. It's like, yeah. Is it the pulse with modulation, right? Pulse with modulation, yes. Yeah. That solar panel needs to be isolated. That's the whole point. So that means current was actually flowing through the signal, the ground signal line on my power meter, which is terrible. <laughs> it was pulling current, pulling presumably a lot of current through a pin that definitely should not have been pulling a lot of current. That was just all whack. I can't believe it worked as well as it did. We're, our ground speed, oh, this is interesting. Our ground speed is 11.5 meters per second. Our calculated airspeed, I don't actually have an airspeed sensor on it. Our calculated airspeed is 5.8 meters per second. So we have a tailwind, which is great. 
that's uh, that's what was in the forecast for today is a easterly wind or a wind blowing from the west to the east so I guess that would be a westerly wind um, the problem is that when we turn around and do the other leg of our mission and start coming back east then we'll have a headwind and it'll be a stronger headwind because it will be in the afternoon so we might not make any progress we might only get to you know 60 miles who knows oh and the plane did ascend I was concerned before because we were at 60 meters still but uh, I think I set it that low over the Beverly Dunes OHV area so that I could get a shot of it from the car. Um, but now we're up to 104 meters. So um, another interesting thing about this waypoint mission is it's so far that I have had to uh, account for changes in elevation with the waypoint altitude. And Mission Planner makes that easy because you can set the waypoints based on terrain altitude. So. Um, it, you're basically setting the waypoint above, like 100 meters above the altitude that Google Earth says that this point, this waypoint is at, if that makes sense. Wow, these are some high power lines. This could be a problem. Yeah, keep going closer, Banj. Getting closer. Oh, really? We might need to uh, circumnavigate these power lines manually. Because they literally come down off the top of the cliff. I think we should be good. The power lines, yeah, I would back off a little bit. Like, keep slowing down yeah, more aggressively because I need to be able to see this. Back up more. I think we're good. Can I nudge it? I'm gonna try and nudge it a little bit. Yeah, that's great. During when you're in auto mode and it's flying a waypoint mission, you can still nudge it with the stick. That's very helpful. And these power lines are very low. Yeah, I have nothing to worry low. about. Okay, so we're good. Dang, I'm still getting uh, bad compass health errors on Mission Planner. And I moved one of the neodymium magnets for the hatch. I moved. I got rid of that, and I also routed the power wires further away from the compass. So, I don't know, man. I guess they're still too close. Still getting electromagnetic interference. Whatever, it doesn't really matter, though. So, uh, this is interesting. I have a lot more statistics on Mission Planner compared to the last time now. We can see uh, right here we've used 1,700 milliamp hours. So the battery that's on board is 4,000 milliamp hours, or 5,000 milliamp hours. Those are pretty good. I'm using the 2170 cells, so large capacity, low discharge. So once that goes above 5,000, we'll know that the plane has used more power than it has stored on board in the battery. The uh, battery current, obviously, that's how much the motor is pulling. Um, waypoint number, we're, we just passed waypoint 15, we're going to waypoint 16. Distance to moving base. This number shows how far away we are from the car. Are you not super hot with that sweatshirt? Uh, I'm chilling. Oh wow, we're pulling a lot of current. We're up to seven amps, eight amps, and the battery is down to 14.5 volts. So yeah, we're losing a lot of voltage. I'm not super confident that uh, we're gonna be able to sustain flight on solar power today. It's probably just because the sun is lower right now. It's still not even 10 o'clock yet. Also, I have a little bit more weight on board today. Uh, I have the Pinpoint RC black box on there, which is a uh, cellular GPS receiver. So if the plane were to get lost, we could find it over cellular signal. But uh, I kind of doubt there's cell service out here. Nothing. So now, now the plane's over here. We crossed it. We crossed paths. This is the FPV monitor we're looking at. We can see the plane's video signal. Looks good. The sun, the sun is like pretty high in the sky. It's like the end of August. It's August 30th. So the sun is definitely not as high in the sky as it was during the summer solstice, unfortunately. Judging on the past performance of the solar plane, we should still be able to fly all day with the sun at this angle, but with the MPPT limiting the charge current to seven or charge uh, power to 75 watts, I don't think we're going to be able to stay up all day. Check out the uh, solar plane V4 t-shirt. You can get it at the merch store, I guess. That, now I'm a real YouTuber, right? That's what they all say. I'm proud of you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you bought the MPPT-5. The GV-5, yeah, MPPT controller. Does there exist a GV-10 MPPT controller? does exist a GV-10, and I actually have it. It's on my Rover, but it's uh, also for a 3S battery. This is a 4S, okay. so I would need to get a new GV-10, and also the GV-10s are heavier. But it would be better, probably, it would probably be better than the GV-5 in this case. We're at 14 meters per second ground speed, so you can speed up a little okay. bit, Bench. I don't have visual, so... It's pretty far out in the distance, I can see it. Yeah, eventually we'll, we'll get to some uh, turns in the road here, and I'll have to help you with the navigation, because I'm looking at the imagery data. This is so cool, this is the first time I've ever used the moving base thing, where we see the blue waypoint that is us. It's so nice. 
Banji, they call this the land of no Teslas. All you have to do is uh, sling a little copper wire over this power line right here. You'll be raring to go in no time. Yeah, you could definitely get some nice solar cells out here to charge your Model X with those icy gullwing doors, huh? That'd be a bold way to live. To drive to your farm field. To drive your Model X with the doors open to your farm field. So Banj, uh, you're a drone software engineer, if I understand correctly. Uh, that is, could be construed as my job title, yes. Tell us about that. Uh, I write applications that control drones at a very high level. So other engineers write the software that runs on the drone, controlling flight and stuff. I write software that controls the drone from a high level, so telling it like waypoints to go to, uh, arming, disarming, uh, health status, telemetry. So basically you make Mission Planner. Uh, I make Mission Planner. And if, if I achieve my goals... <laughs> An equivalent version. It will be eight times as aesthetic and equally functional as Mission Planner. See, so Banji places a high priority on form over function. Form and function. Ah, you can have both. Oh wow, it's one of those tractor things I saw in the movies. There you go, Vange. Not a Tesla. Uh, is this your first time seeing a tractor in, uh, real, in real life? No, I'm sure I've seen a tractor. I saw that snow tractor with you. I think that's a snow cat, though. Snow tractor, yeah, snow cat. Uh, these are the good Americans that make your food, Vange. There's no food in that field. There is hay, and that hay gets fed to cows, and the cows are what you eat. Uh, I'm vegan. It's just going. It's cruising, man. We are cruising. Banj, his impression of Utah is that everyone is just a hick. Everyone talks like a hick, but it's really not like I just that. think they talk like you. I talk normally. That's... See, I talk like a American Pacific Northwestern or just like everyone else around here. That's just not true. I'm sorry, Daniel. Okay, okay. Not to suggest that I talk how other people talk, but... You talk like a 14th century paper press manufacturing owner with like a feather in your hat and like your wife with a big hoop skirt and you're going to the play in your in your horse-drawn carriage you talk good sir would you mind running in front of my carriage to knock the stones out of the way you talk like you stand in fields with large hats on and a single piece of wheat sticking out of your mouth being like hell yeah this is the laugh i mean i do do that as part of my job as but my the job only description i stand in fields the only difference is i'm flying a drone while i'm doing it yeah which is why i call you a space cowboy oh there's more power lines coming off the oh these ones look taller I'm gonna be in altitude, I'm gonna come back. Yeah, we're above them for sure. Primitive road. Okay, so you're gonna keep going. Oh, Jesus. Nice. Go nice and smooth on the primitive road. Straight? Yeah. We are cruising, this is great. Battery's at 14 point, eh, it's not good. So yeah, this road goes up the cliff right here. Look at that, the traction light is flashing. Yeah, we're just skirping a little bit. Definitely turn on four wheel drive mode. Oh, no, we don't need it. Why are you saying we don't need it? Because Is it like bad to use it or something? We only need four wheel drive if we're like slipping and we're not slipping. The track control light being on means we're slipping. Yeah, I think we're pretty far out in the in uh, ahead. Do you have slime? Yep. We're ahead? No, we're behind it. Oh. So you can spank it. Yeah, I don't think we're going fast. Okay, well, yeah. Let's slap it here since it's straight. We yeah. have good visibility. Uh, Once we see the car drive underneath the video feed, then we know we're going fast enough. Oh, it lost mission planner lost connection. Weird. I have to click connect again. Oh no. It has to download all the parameters. Yeah, get, get as close to it as you can. Flying crest, I have to slow down a little bit. Okay, we're back online. Thank goodness. The battery voltage is bouncing around a lot. I thought it was up to 15 again, but now it's down to 14 flat, which is not good. Wow, these golden hills are just beautiful, huh, Bench? Good stuff out here. I think this is just a cattle guard, so you can just go through. Oh, look, a beehive. Cool. Yeah, Banj, they put those there so that cows can't walk through. Because cows are too dumb to walk on a ladder. That's terrible, but okay. Okay, Banj, you might have to step on it a little bit. Sure. Slap that whip, if you know what I mean. Uh, oh yeah, I can definitely tell by the look of the grass that we're, we have a tailwind. Well, westernly wind. Do you feel like Ken Block, Banj? Do you feel like a rally car driver? No. I... <laughs> I'm like disclosing every single road surface change to you like you're my mom who's like clutching my knee as I'm driving. I mean that's what rally car drivers do. They have their co-pilot, you know? Co-pilot like clutches left, their knee. Left five minus over right five plus. 
You know, I think they might replace uh, rally car driver co-pilots with Google Maps. It kind of is probably better. Well, we're pretty far out there, so let's uh, go as fast as you're comfortable with. As fast as you're able to not crash my car with. Yeah, that's really what I'm going for, is not crashing your car. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, is that just a rock? Big old boulder in the road. Oh my God, why? Fell off the hill. If someone thought that was like a paper bag or something. Who would think that that's a paper bag? Why would there be a rock in the road? Because there's a mountain right next to the road. There's no big government out here to move the rock, man. Why do you say it like it would be a bad thing if the rock wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, we're, I can't even see us on the screen here because we're so far behind. Well, I think we're about to go on to uh, pave the road again, so we'll have no problem keeping up once that occurs. So. Uh, we're gonna have to slow down for this terrible cow trap. Cow trap. It's not a cow trap, it's a cow anti-trap. They don't want cows to pass. Okay. See, Banj, that's where China would shoot their missile. Right into the heart of the American grid. And your gold ETFs will do you no good. We're about to get on road 26. You, you're gonna find a sharp turn up ahead. A sharp right? Uh, yeah, yep, this right. We're gonna get on that paved road. Okay. Okay. Full stop. God yep. bless America. Yep. Okay, now we're uh, doing good. Now we're on pavement so we can giddy up. You know, Banj, I bet that if we would have done that mission that went straight east instead of wrapping around and going back west, I bet we would be able to go 100 miles, but now I'm not so sure. Yeah, try and get closer. Okay. Try and like stay under it. I think, I think that's, that's us. us. <laughs> yeah, so we're ahead of it. This is fun, it's like a video game. Can you close your eyes and drive from the screen? Terrible idea. <laughs> Battery's up to 15.3 volts, that's pretty good. So we just pulled off, we uh, sped up, got ahead of the plane, and now we're gonna let it pass us a little bit. We kinda have to play leapfrog now because we're on a uh, faster road. Our ground speed is down to 10 meters per second, so we're not going that fast. Our calculated airspeed is two meters per second, which is clearly not true, because if it were, the plane would be falling out of the sky. Yeah, it would be nice to have an airspeed sensor. Airspeed sensors also make the plane fly more efficiently, so that's another reason that I should have one. This plane is like, you know, you see a car that's held together with rope and duct tape and like someone, you know, cut the roof off and then they put another roof on. That's kind of what the solar plane V4 is like right now. Not in its prime. It never really was in its prime. Uh, it's time to move on to a better version, but not quite there yet. Look at that gaggle of birds. A gaggle of gooses? That's a fleet of fledglings. It looks like the wind is turning more north now. I can see that the plane is holding a north a north angle as it's moving to the east, so uh, we're crabbing, as they say. It looks pretty windy from by the looks of the ground here, too. So, wow. Did you see that there's a shadow? Oh, the shadow of the solar plane just passed us. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's totally crabbing hard. We are approaching by far the most densely populated area of the waypoint mission, so we're just maintaining a safe distance from the plane now and just being extra careful to maintain control if something should go wrong, and uh, we're doing great. I can see the plane visually, doing about 10 meters per second, kind of crabbing into a side uh, crosswind. So we are exiting the town of Othello. The plane is right here overhead. I, uh, I planned the waypoint mission so that the plane would be out to the right side of the car and kind of stay over the cornfields and not the houses that were on the left side. So uh, now we're back on the open road. There's the plane right above us. That's awesome. Cruising right along, crabbing with the wind. Okay. To make sure we follow the route, I'm going to go over to the plan page where I can see the mission. Yep, so it looks like we just keep going straight for a lot longer. And now we're just uh, over cornfield or just agricultural fields the entire time, so. Weird, this is showing altitude uh, relative to the home point, even though the plane is following altitude relative to the, the terrain underneath it. So it's 200, and, it's not actually 280 meters high. It's uh, only 80 meters high here. Wow, those people have a lot of chickens or something. It's like my dream. If any of you viewers out there have a few dozen extra chickens to put in our backyard, let us know. Our landlord will find you and kill you. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. I have to go back to the plan screen to see the waypoints. So we're gonna be turning on Booker Road, South Booker Road. Look at that guy and his John Deere. Yeehaw, America. That guy's got a nice yard though. He's living his best life. 
best life. You know, and respects. I would love to live out here. I would just fly the solar plane every day. Uh, how would you sustain yourself unless you're also farming while flying your solar plane? Uh, buy stuff from the store. Live off of YouTube revenue. I mean, how much does a house cost out here, right? 20 bucks. Nothing. So, like, it can't be that hard. You'll have all those chickens, so it's fine. I'll have so many chickens. Yeah. I had a goat or two. Because if you get one goat, it needs a friend. So you gotta get another, because you gotta have at least two goats. So take a right up here, and then we're gonna be exiting gravel back onto pavement, going south for a sec, and then we'll keep going east. There's the plane right there, wow, that's cool. Monsanto, there's Monsanto, it's right there. That's extra not good. Wow, should we crash the solar plane into should it? absolutely crash something into it. 16 meters per second, so we're still going pretty quick. Um, that's great. Battery is hovering around 15.4 volts, that's good. So we kind of are sustaining uh, power, sustaining flight on solar power, I guess. Our battery used is 6,640 milliamp hours. So that's, uh, you know, 1,600 more milliamp hours than is in the battery on board. So we know the solar is working because we would not have been able to fly this far without it. So we're kind of converging on the plane now. It's out, uh, oh, I see it. It's out to the left of us. I, I could have put a lot more work into this ground station than I did. Dragon Link outside, question mark? Yeah, Dragon Link should be outside. Things should be on Velcro. The plane seems a little low to me. I'm gonna do actions, set altitude to 100 meters, click, see if it climbs. It's right right out there. Why is it going f***ing down? Change altitude. Oh, need to oh f Yeah, something's wrong. Something's very wrong. I'm gonna go to fly by wire A. Shit, yo. So, okay. I'm manually taking control of the aircraft. So here's what happened. I set the, I set change altitude, but it's trying to change its altitude based on the altitude from the home point. I should have known better. So let's do an experiment. Let's put it back into auto and see what happens. Is it gonna go up or down? 297, 298. Is it climbing or descending? Uh, looks like it's climbing. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, we can keep going. Let's follow it. If okay. We can. That little ordeal probably cost us a lot of uh, power. But I think we're, we're back on track. It's looking pretty good. There's some hawks circling around right where it's flying, so that indicates there's thermals in the area. Okay, note to self. Do not change the altitude again. Or, if I do change it, change it uh, higher than the current altitude. It kind of looks like we're going through some turbulence right now. I think we just hit a really strong thermal because the plane just did a little zigzag. Circular crops and we can't tell from down here, but you can see it in the FPV feed and on the map. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Pretty cool. So what the aliens see when they come to Earth. I don't really know why you would do a circular crop though. Uh, it's because their irrigation system is, it orbits, oh, that it spins, oh, yes. So yeah, we're still pretty far ahead. We're ahead of it? No, the plane is ahead. Sorry, I can see it actually. Okay, so we have, yeah, like one more block until we turn. I think we're gonna go back on dirt. So the plane is gonna split off to the right pretty significantly and kind of deviate off of the road. And uh, we'll have to make a right angle turn, but the plane's gonna cut the corner short. So we'll have to try and go faster and speed up for that bit. Wow, we're driving into oblivion. The plane's about to turn left. Oh wow, there's a big altitude difference here. There it goes. Okay, the plane's turning right. Did I say left? I meant right. We're gonna turn, to turn yep, on this next road. Right. It's gonna be a shitty road, I think. Battery is down to 14.1 volts, so we're pretty low. Yeah. I don't think we'll end up being able to fly the full 100 miles, but we'll see. I don't like how, how much of a drop there is on the side of the road. Our ground speed is still decently high. We're at 12, 13 meters per second, so we don't have a headwind, that's for sure. Okay, the plane just turned, and now it's heading due south. Uh, we're at the town of Hatton, a very small agricultural town, it looks like. And the plane should be right above us. Look, they got nice sunflowers. This is a lovely place. Those are great sunflowers. Wow, looks like the wind is blowing pretty strong from the west. It might have a slight tailwind, but it's mostly a crosswind right now. Uh, left or right, Doug? Uh, you're gonna go right. No, sorry, just follow the road left. I don't know my lefts from my rights. Which is, I didn't know that about you, and it's becoming a problem. I am maintaining visual contact with the aircraft. It is ahead, we are behind. Mission planner disconnected again. That's weird. 
Yeah, we're, it's way up ahead. I don't know why Mission Planner disconnects. Maybe the USB gets jiggled or something. Wow, there's a lot of dirt around here, huh, Banj? There's a lot of, I don't know what this is. Look at that, just hundreds of miles of dirt. I don't think it's dirt, I think it's dead grass. Yes, sorry, dead grass. This is more dirt-like on this side. Wow, look at that, it's an army tank. Seriously? No, it's just a farmer tank. Gotta figure out where we go here. We turn. I think we go straight. Oh, we do turn. We keep going for now. Yeah, don't turn here, but keep going. You will eventually turn right. And I mean right. Oh, the plane just did a 90 degree turn. I think it just hit a big thermal or something. It's right behind us. It just totally got like knocked off course for a sec. It must just be turbulence and thermals. That's wild. There we are though, parked on the ground. Yeah, we are not gonna be getting on that. We're gonna be turning right before that road. So go up to that road, but stop before it so that I may relieve myself. It's gonna be a trick getting out of the car. All the stuff. Oh, it's a dust devil. Oh yeah, a little twister. That's pretty neat. I wonder if the plane will see it. Probably. I wonder if it's actually gigantic and the plane will be ensnared. <laughs> Good point though, there's a dust devil, which means the plane's about to fly into a big thermal. Presumably. Okay, you can stop here, Vange. Thank you. Uh, oh wow. Oh jeez. Okay. FV is still good. Yeah, yeah we're good. Woo. Um, take a right hand turn and we'll be right back on course. The plane is doing another cross cut across this corner where the car is making a right hand turn but the plane is cutting it short. So here's where things uh, turn south for us. We are now only doing 6.2 meters per second of ground speed, which is not very much. So now we're flying into the wind. So we're gonna be going much slower now. We've made it this far, which is awesome. Uh, I see the plane right out there. That's great. And it's 11.30 in the morning. So we should be getting full solar power just about. Um, Banj, does your Apple Watch agree? Uh, we are almost at peak solar. You're almost at peak solar. It says the battery is only doing <laughs> 0 0.2 amps, which in that case we should definitely be charging. We're probably just flying in a big thermal right now, honestly. So we're about to drive uh, through a big ditch. It looks like a, there's a stream or a river bed down in there. The plane is just going to go straight over the top and we will kind of have to go down and around. So we should probably get a little bit ahead of it so that we can uh, not fall too far behind. We're currently ahead of it, which is good, so. So I think you drive under the bridge. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, don't mess with it. <laughs> oh, I see the plane. There's gotta be a ton of thermals out here. There's thermals and dust devils. This is uh, not the kind of environment the solar plane should be flying in. Is that it right there? That's, yes, wow, yeah, that is it. Oh, this is perfect, with the ridge line like that. Okay, so despite the fact that the vehicle had to make a big detour, we uh, did not get behind the solar plane because the solar plane is only going six meters per second. So we can just chill here for a sec. Angie's taking a snack break. Yeah, that thing sure isn't moving very quick. That's for sure. All right, boys. We gone get her. You were like, follow the plane, which you, the spirit of what you said was, we have to follow the plane very quickly. But you said, we gotta go get her. And you're like, yeet, yeet, yeet. And you just like bounced up and down in your chair. That's how know. Utah people talk. That's, I'm just how you talk. And wow. I'm projecting you onto Utah. That is so neat. This is, this is crazy. I've never done anything like this. We're just flying so far. We technically could just not follow it. And it would have flown this way completely on its own so far, assuming it didn't hit that tree at that one place, which I think it would have cleared it, but like, it's just doing its thing up there. Every time Mission Planner loses connection and I have to reconnect, the distance traveled thing resets, so we don't, can't actually see how far it's gone. It's so weird to have to keep my foot on the brake. Oh my God, it's not a Tesla. That's not what I said. It isn't, but that's not what I said. Mmm, so salty, delicious. Wow, it's just going so slow now. It's just cruising. Let's zoom out. You want to see the full mission, Banj? Sure. Here we are. That's it. So, uh, we have gone all the way around. And now we're here, and now we're going back west. But it's going to take longer to go west, so. I thought you just said you were vegan. 
Hmm? What, what is vegan mean except pretentious? We're like pretty close to the future with this. With a solar plane? Yeah. It is the future. It's 2020. This is what it looks like. Kids are just going to be chasing their solar planes around all day. Kind of a vibe. I'm not going to lie. An aesthetic vibe? Yeah. You would solar plane for the aesthetic? I mean, we are doing it. I don't know that this is for the aesthetic. I would say it's probably not for the aesthetic. There's no railroad thingies. Yeah, you have to be on your toes out here. I wasn't on my toes, Daniel. Wow. Well, we gotta change that. Huh? Jesus, what? I didn't even know they made railroad crossings that didn't have the thing on it. People here aren't desensitized by their Teslas, so they actually pay attention okay, to the road. Off. Waze tells me whenever there's a railroad track, we just don't have Waze on right now. Ah. Dude, these are onions. That's awesome. This is where my onions come from. Do people just steal like onions? Sometimes? I mean, we could definitely go steal some onions. I don't want to steal onions. I'm asking if criminals steal onions. Probably. I mean, you could pull up here at the dead of night and steal a bunch of onions. Sell them for like 20 bucks. We didn't genetically engineer lawn grass in America, did we? Uh, I don't think we genetically engineered it. We probably bred it. That's expensive. Selective breeding. Selective breeding for thin, flaky grass. Yeah, kind of just like how Pugs are selectively bred to be footballs. It's pretty bouncy up there. We're definitely rocking and rolling quite a bit. I think we should uh, speed ahead because there's another section of the road here where we're going to kind of be winding a little bit and the plane just takes a straight course over top. Um, and we're also passing over a more busy road. We're not going to get on the more busy road, but we're passing over it at an angle, so we want to be close to the plane for that. We're going pretty slow, but we're not going too slow like we're doing eight meters per second right now so it must be mostly a crosswind so hopefully this uh, keeps up and we keep making slow but steady progress wow look at all these cows Moo! so I think we're definitely like sustaining flight on solar power but the caveat there is some of that solar power might be coming from thermals <laughs> still counts still counts yeah it's still solar power now we're up to 16 volts but that's because the motors off if the wind picks up and our ground speed really drops then I don't think we'll be able to can, uh, finish the mission. But if if it keeps up with the current ground speed, then we're probably going to be good. So the solar plane is doing another side cut kind of operation. We are about to take a right turn, and then we'll be taking a left turn. Solar plane is kind of doing the shortest path over this uh, intersection of roads. That is just so wild. When you look out the window to the side, and you see this plane just like just cruising along and it hasn't touched the ground in how many hours what are, i don't even know how long it's been in the air it's like a long time like four hours or more it's crazy it's just fully autonomous just going it's just like i don't know why that just gets me it's just so cool just cruising along not a care in the world it doesn't even have a brain it just has a bunch of ones and zeros once we get past these trees, we should pull off because we're a bit ahead. Status update, we're at seven meters per second. Um, moving right along, slow and steady. The battery voltage is up to 16, which is pretty good. So it looks like we're definitely running on solar power. Solar mixed thermal power. We can look at the whole mission here and we are, come on baby, zoom out. We are right there. So we're getting, we're coming up on a third of the way done with the downwind leg. We're going to pass Orv's Potato Services, Hoban Schirkeberg Hay Trading, Visa Rose Ranch. Sound like lovely places. When I was doing my waypoint planning, this turn coming up, um, it, there's a big altitude change. Like we're going up over a pretty big hill, so the plane will need to climb an altitude. Uh, so this will be a bit sketchy. So Banj, I propose we kind of uh, hold off right before the hill starts and make sure the solar plane is climbing properly So that it gets around the hill This road doesn't go straight through so we're gonna have to go up a little bit and then turn back down to get to the road That we see going up the hill. Oh, it looks I like see. it's straight ahead. We're gonna have to go around Okay. So right after we get around this corner, I would wait I just I guess the important part is that we maintain a signal as it's going up the hill So we just need to stay behind it at the right distance. It does it does look like there's hopefully enough waypoints going up the hill so those will hopefully redirect its altitude each time so the plane is right above us now going eight meters per second pulling 2.2 amps that's not a lot it's going to start to pull a lot more power though once it climbs up this hill 
Dun, dun, dun. Will it work? Still hasn't started climbing. Oh, now it's kind of climbing. Oh, it's definitely climbing. 214 meters. 220 meters. We're climbing. Yeehaw! Pulling more power, too. Voltage is down to 15. 230 meters. Perfect. Okay, we're doing great. This is great. We are maintaining 230 meters, though. Hopefully that's enough. I think it'll hit another waypoint, though, and climb even higher. So yeah, we're good. We're doing good. No intervention needed. Uh, solar noon is in 16 minutes. Wow. We're at 15.8 volts. The plane's getting low. Relatively low? Judging by the FPV feed. That's it right there, right? Yeah, so we just gotta make sure it starts to climb again. I'm gonna see where the waypoints are. So it's about to hit another waypoint, and then it should start climbing again. So it should start climbing right about now. 265. Uh, it's not really climbing now, but I think we're high enough. It looks fine, but you know, the hill keep, keeps going, so I just don't want it to run into the hillside eventually. Sure. Let's see if there's any more waypoints to redirect its altitude. Now it's at 270 meters. Okay, so we did go up a little bit. 280 meters, 281. Um, we, let's see, plan. It's about to hit another waypoint, so yeah, I think that should direct it up even higher, and I think we're totally fine. Altitude, not a problem, no intervention needed. Look at all them apples, or peaches, peaches. or whatever. I think those are apples. Pretty sure those are apples. I've never seen an apple tree. Those could be pears. Those could be pears. <laughs> those, could, those could also be pomegranates. There yeah. it is, I said it. Uh, I don't think they're pomegranates. They could be, though. I don't know where those are. For either. all I know, they could be. So this is exciting. We're about, we just went over that little curve and now we're about to, I guess this is the opposite of exciting. We're about to go on a very long straight stretch of absolute nothingness. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. This is exciting. I'm happy this is working so well. Good. Is it working well? Good question, Banj. Let's look. 15.68 volts. So yeah, we're chilling. It's not even solar noon yet, according to Banji's Apple Watch. And we're at 305 meters, so. We're going 10 meters per second. We're cruising too. This is great. I mean, we're not going as fast as earlier, but we're not going slow. Yeah. Looking out the window, there's like no uh, wind at all, it seems. It looks pretty dead calm. Yeah, is that a wind turbine right there? So, those are used to blow the stagnant air around oh, in the see. winter. So, in the winter, they don't want the crops to freeze and oh. cool air pools up. So they blow it around. That's clever. Yeah, it's they're propane powered, I think. So many apples! Oh yeah, you know what you should do. I should really go get an apple. Just steal an apple for Kershaw Farms? If you don't leave two dollars there. It's not pretty good. I bet it'd be extra delicious too. Like I've never had an apple fresh off the vine. Wow, look at this big hill. We're gonna go down a big hill. That's terribly exciting. So we're gonna have not a care in the world in regards to altitude. That's where we're going. Look how far we're driving. That's wild. Wow, the waypoints are spaced really few and far between here. It might have just hit a waypoint and therefore resultingly dropped in altitude quite a bit, but it's doing fine now. I'm always a little bit concerned when this plane drops in altitude because that's the reason it crashed the first time. Hey look, I see uh, Mount Rainier in the distance. That's cool. Hmm. But uh, yeah, descending in this plane is a little sketchy, but I Reinforced the servos, reinforced the trailing edge so it's stiffer and it's all better. Now we're back down to, let's see, 259 meters, 268 meters, cruising along, all is well. So now we're uh, entering the section of this drive that's just desolate. There's just nothing out here. We're about to cross a canal. Looks pretty canal-ish. I actually uh, flew the Alta X over this canal when I was shooting the cargo landing gear video. Oh. It was a great shot. Remember that band? The sun was sparkling in the water. I do remember that. It was that beautiful. Was it was this canal, but way further west. It's fine if we get ahead because the plane is very stable right now. Seemingly no problems. So we yeah. can get, we can go ahead and then find a place to pull off. Oh wow, it's really windy. Holy cow. This is concerning. It seems clear that we have a strong headwind that we're flying into. Well, maybe not. It might just be like variable thermal cycles rolling through that are kind of blowing every which way because now it feels calm. When I first opened the door, it was kind of crazy windy. I feel like we're in Texas, but we're in Washington. Look at all them tumbleweeds. 
Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty uh pretty blustery out here. Got some dust devils and oh there's the solar plane, I see it. Wonderful. Great. Okay, back on the road. Oh it's hot. Good thing it's not Tuesday. I think it's supposed to get like a hundred out here. Jeez. Ooh, that's a food truck. Ice cream! That's an ice cream truck. Follow it. We are, let's get some stats here. We are about, uh, zoom out, I command you. We're about a little less than halfway done with the barren desert portion. Oh, that, oh, there's where the beer cans come from. Oh, sure enough. A beer can just fell out of that boat. That's exactly where the beer cans came That was such a coincidence. You were just asking where all the beer cans on the side of the road came from. Is it people partying or do people throw them out of the cars? Now we know they come out of boats. Not getting any telemetry and we are just about out of range of FPV, so we should uh, hit the road. All right, clear. The GPS position on Mission Planner has not updated in a little while. I really should have put the Dragonlink high power receiver in the plane. This is just the nano receiver. So we would probably be getting a lot better telemetry radio performance if I had that big high power receiver. Oh, there we go, starting to get a few bits, a few bites. If you're just looking at total distance, we're probably like, Geez, I don't know. Almost three quarters of the way there. The battery is at 15.7 volts, so we are running on solar power, people. High noon saved us. And thermals. Actually, yeah, thermals are the real hero here. Although we are pulling eight amps right now, that's a lot. So we're not in a thermal, we must be in some sink or something. Ground speed is down to nine meters per second. Not too bad. Ooh, what does Daniel's kitchen have today? Oh, it's what Daniel eats for every meal. Mush. Yay. What is happening right now? I'm eating mush. Why is it this color? Turmeric. Anti-inflammatory. So good. You want some? No. This is just wild, Banj. Can't believe we're doing it. You can just buy solar panels off the internet? Yeah. Want some? Sure. Although you already did the sky and land, so now there's only solar boats available to us. Yeah, I have not made a solar boat yet. That'd be fun. The Columbia River is off to our left, and I'd like to get a shot of that. We'll see. I don't know if it'll be visible, but... What does that say? It's a wildlife refuge. Ah, we're in a wildlife refuge. Hopefully we don't scare any birds. I should probably save my appetite, because this town that we're about to enter has the best tacos I've ever had. The plane is 158 meters away from us. So we're gonna leapfrog the plane again and get up ahead of it. We are now at 15.2 volts. Ground speed 10 meters per second. And we're kind of losing connection, going out of range, so we need to drive ahead. Was that just a muscle memory thing? You're so used to poking your AirPods, you're just poking your ear. I'm scratching my ear. Did uh, I miss it like three times or something? <laughs> you know when people get their arms cut off, they have like a phantom limb. Yeah, they feel like they have an arm, but they don't. Yes, no, I... Although I do think of AirPods as a type of, uh, human augmentation. Oh, good video. It looks the exact same as it has for the last hour. I'm honestly so surprised that we're actually completing this whole mission. I did not think we would. Yeah, I see it. Oh, we got some big power lines. Uh, I can't see the power lines in the FPV feed, but... It looks like we're plenty high. It, it, the solar plane always looks like it's lower than it is. Oh yeah, we're way above the power lines. Solar plane always looks like it's lower than it is because it's so big. It's a six foot wingspan, so yeah, it's easy to spot in the sky. Wowee, lots of uh, grapes getting grown out here. Seriously? This is wine country. Is that what grapes look like? Like, almost all of this stuff is grapes. That doesn't look like grapes. Yeah, they're grapevines. I don't think those are grapevines. Ooh, we're down to 6.4 meters per second, 7 meters per second. It's not too fast. But our battery is remaining at 15.7 volts, so that's good. Okay, we are turning off of this road, headed to Matawa. The best tacos in the land. So the car is right there, just turned. See the little blue, blue icon. Can you believe that, Banj? They put fabric over the entire apple orchard. That's crazy. Pretty wild. I don't know what it's for. Probably keeping out the bugs. Where's a do-rag? A do-rag for the apple trees. Sounds about right. This uh, this stop sign has been fired upon multiple times. How does that make you feel? I don't think those are bullet holes. I think those are, uh, it's just poor stop sign design is what it is. Poor, <laughs> oh, they're aerodynamic holes. That's what they are. Wow, the prop sounds like it's spinning so slow. It's probably because it is. 
It's going so slow and steady. It's pretty calm. It's surprisingly calm right now. Okay, Vang, let's slap this whip. All right, let's eat this truck. How far are we from tacos? Uh, pretty close. It's pretty sour. Did you steal an apple? Oh, it was really sour. We are more than halfway. We're like, wow, we're like three quarters of the way done with the Western Lagos mission. So we're, we're going to be done pretty soon. Right on schedule. Hey, amazing, yeah. Okay, so let's keep going. So many sunflowers and apple trees. This is quite a cheerful area. So we have now overtaken the aircraft. We are ahead of it. Such a pretty lawn. It's a nice lawn. It's the nicest lawn I've ever seen. Damn, this plane is so slow. Hurry up. It's crazy that it even worked, dude. True that. Getting video here now. I can see the plane just slowly working its way down the field before it's going to hang a right hand turn and come this way. So let's land this puppy. It's been such a long day. I can't believe this has worked this well. I did not think we'd get 100 miles, but we did it. So our camera battery died in the car, um, but, anyways, we were getting pretty close to the end of the mission, anyways. Um, the voltage is still around 15. We just pulled around to this school parking lot. It's uh, Sunday with coronavirus, so there's no one here, obviously. But the plane is just coming down the road. I can see it from here. And uh, it's programmed to just enter over this field behind me and just start to do a square. And in, in each waypoint of the square, it's gonna descend down to like 40 or 50 meters, and then it'll just circle over the field, and then I'll take manual control of it, and then I'll land it. There it is. It made it! Final destination. Amazing. That's crazy. I can't believe we did it, Banch. High five. <laughs> What's it doing now? So it looks like it's... Oh, wow. It's taking that corner real wide. It's really kind of squiggling along the, the course quite a bit, but um, that's just because it's windy and this plane is kind of tuned pretty loosely, so. Still hitting all the waypoints and it hasn't gotten too low yet. It's about to hit the final waypoint. Um, oh, it's already gone into circle mode. I set it to 40 meters. That looks like a little bit less than 40 meters. So there must have been some altitude error that built up throughout the flight, but uh, it's not hitting the ground, so that's good. It's just circling there. Okay, I'm going to take manual control and land the plane now. A hundred miles! Or more! That's crazy! The camera's still recording. I got a 120 gig SD card in there, so probably needed it for sure. That's a lot. That was a lot of flight time, a lot of hours in the air. Before this flight, I was not very confident because of the power issues I was having with the GV5. Today, I don't think it was getting as much power as it was when the MPPT controller was bypassed with my ground from the current sensor, but it still seems to work well enough um, with the 75 watt maximum output that the GV5 charge controller in here has. Um, I do think it was getting a lot of help from thermals because there were a lot of points in time where the battery uh, motor current was near zero. So, uh, but anyways, that's a system level test for you right there. 100 plus miles. Um, I'll put the exact number up here on the screen, um, but it flew a long ways and I'm very proud of the Solar Plane V4. Um, on another note, do not try this at home. We did a lot of planning on how to do this flight safely um, and we were monitoring the plane throughout the entire flight very closely so do not try this at home especially don't try this if you're using like a larger 
plane that weighs more. This thing is basically like a big Nerf football. Like it's just made of Dollar Tree foam board. It doesn't weigh all that much and it has a lot of surface area. So if this like hits you, like you'd be fine. Um, so it, there's not a lot of potential for personal or property damage here. Yeah, just be responsible with your drones and you know, it's like just be cool. So anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.